Yo, what's the story? In today's video, the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 and video settings you really should think about changing. Making your footage look cinematic and buttery smooth is something that everybody is trying to achieve. Now, the quickest and easiest way to start experimenting with this is to change your rotational speed. Now, you have fast default and slow, and as you can see, each one of them has quite a different speed when it comes to the actual gimbal. For me, and the most cinematic looking one is absolutely the slow one. So if you want to get that kind of slower, more smoother footage, make sure your rotational speed is set to slow. Dynamic framing is a really cool feature if you use it correctly. So to enable it, we tap the icon on the left of the screen. Let's select dynamic framing and hit start. Now, all of these squares here, if you position yourself in there and select one of them, you're always going to appear in whatever section of the frame that you've chosen. Now, it's not just for you. You can actually use this for other objects as well. For example, we've locked onto this pole here. So we're always going to keep that little pole on that side of the screen no matter what way we turn the actual camera so it's a really powerful feature and get really creative with it as we can see here you've got a whole bunch of frame rates on the dji osmo pocket tree from 60 frames per second right down to 24 frames per second and they all do things very very differently this is 4k 24 and as you can see because we don't have an nd filter yet we are not really getting motion blur, but this is what 4K24 looks. And if we jump into 4K60, it looks very different, especially if you're in row to 60 frames per second, because the Osmo Pocket 3 is now pulling in 60 frames every single second and putting that together into a movie versus 24 frames every single second. So there's a big difference, but this is what it is gonna look like if you're doing 60 frames per second. Some streamers might do 60 frames per second, but the one thing on the Osmo Pocket 3, not only is, face tracking enabled in 4k 60 you can also slow it down substantially to get some really good slow motion if you're serious about making footage that's a little bit more cinematic a little bit more film like you really have to pay attention to the pro mode and in particular the image adjustment so you swipe right you get down to image adjustment and then you have sharpness and noise reduction you can see on screen here the differences between them all realistically sharpness set to high or you know as low, high as it'll go to like two it, it just looks too digital for me bring the sharpness down to negative two bring the noise reduction down as low as it'll go as well experiment maybe with the noise reduction but for the best part, less sharpness is better. So you can dial it a little bit in and post if needs be, but it's just too digital looking, you know? And maybe that's the look you're going for, but I would hazard a guess probably most people don't want their image over sharpened because people are like, huh, what the heck is going on with that? One of the other big video settings here to change, really, if you're serious about getting the best looking footage out of the Osmo Pocket 3. Now, keep in mind, You've got to put a little bit of extra work into this one because this takes us down the route of color grading. Let me know if you'd like to see a video on how to color grade D-Log. That's the 10-bit color profile that you use to get the most out of the Osmo Pocket 3. Now, 10-bit color is dealing in a billion colors while 8-bit color is basically millions. So you're dealing with millions versus billions. So what that means is you can color grade the footage a lot more simple as there's going to be a little bit more detail in the dark parts of the image which are called the shadows and there's going to be a little bit more detail in the bright parts of the image called the highlights as well so log profile it looks awful but it will need some little bit of work but if you want to get the best image quality out of the osmo pocket tree then the d log profile is the one to go for and what's the worst that can happen you can also press reset and just go again and color grade to your heart's content You've got different focus modes within the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, which are very useful. If you swipe to the right and we go down, I'm in pro mode here, you can see focus mode so you can get single, which allows you to tap on the screen to go to different parts of the image if you want it in focus or out of focus. You have continuous focus, which is always going to try and keep you in focus if it's tracking you or whatever, but it's a continuous focus, so the focus is always going to change. And then product showcase, if you've got that on, anytime you hold something up to the Osmo Pocket 3, if you're shown stuff to the camera, close up, then it's going to concentrate on that and blur everything else 
out. Exposure is something that, yeah, the camera can run it automatically and do it quite well, but if you really want to start dialing it in and if you get your hands on some ND filters, you swipe to the right, select exposure and make sure it's on manual. That's where you can change your shutter speed. That one over 50 is that buttery smooth cinematic shutter speed, but you're not going to get one over 50 really without having an ND filter. You can also change your ISO levels. So this is kind of how bright the sensor gets. Remember, the higher the ISO, the more noise it's going to bring into the image. Then here's the key thing here, and nobody's spotted this one. This is a really exclusive tip, by the way. When you're recording, if you swipe to the right, you can actually change the exposure value. So if things are too bright, you don't have to stop recording. You can just swipe up or swipe down, which is a really nice little trick to know. Turning on the grid is the absolute easiest way to help you take better footage. All of those lines that are on the screen, that's called the rule of thirds. And if you get stuff happening at the intersection of these lines like I have here, then it's just going to be far more pleasing to the eye. Right now, there are three different gimbal modes in the Osmo Pocket 3, and you can access them simply by swiping down. And then if we select the gimbal mode, we can go follow, which essentially is going to have the camera follow you around quite smoothly. If you pan down, it's going to go down. If you do left or right, it's going to follow you. Okay, then the next one up is tilt lock. This is very good for pullback shots or keeping stuff static because the camera always stays in the one position. The horizon is always level. It's pretty funky to see it actually in action. Actually in action. And then the other one is FPV. So no matter what way you move the camera, as you can see, the footage and the camera is going to go that way, whether it's up, down, tilt, whatever. So depending on the shot that you want to get, you may well have to jump into a different gimbal mode. For me, I absolutely love the tilt lock mode. It's pretty good. The zoom in the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, you know what? It's actually not too bad. It's usable if needs be now. Sometimes a lot of zooms can look a bit cheesy, but there is a setting that is buried within the Osmo Pocket 3 settings and it's under joystick speed and you can actually change the speed of the zoom. So you can go up or down. So you can go up at seven and you can go all the way down to one if needs be. So that's a pretty cool one to have if you want to do a fast zoom or a slow zoom. And while you're in there, actually, you can change the gimbal speed as well to uh, seven all the way down to one. So if you want to move the gimbal a little bit slower when you're using the joystick, that's the way to do it. Those video settings will absolutely help you out when it comes to shooting video with the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. Now, here's the thing though. There's a whole bunch of mistakes that you can make with this camera because it's so in-depth and there's so much functionality. And these mistakes can not only ruin your footage, they could completely ruin your whole video. If you want to see the mistakes that you absolutely can avoid, check out this video right now.